الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله During the 7th century, the forces of Islam burst across the Mediterranean world, completely remaking the map. In the 8th century, the Islamic Empire held sway over North Africa and southern Spain. In 732, they were stopped by Charles Martel in the Loire Valley and were turned in defeat to return to Spain. Ferdinand and Isabella finally drove the Muslim forces from Spain in 1492. In the east, Muslim armies marched as far as the Indus River and held significant territory by 751. It wasn't until 1453 when Constantinople fell to the Ottoman Turks that Muslim pressure on the Byzantine Empire ended victoriously. This swift and complete conquest of these territories was not due to just superior military strategies. The Islamic religion had a great appeal to millions of converts. The con contributions of Islam to the body of world knowledge are unparalleled. Arab scholars translated classical philosophers, and these translations were sent to the West. Arab scholarship also laid the foundations for arithmetic and astronomy. They made significant contributions to the study of medicine. Their art also created an enduring body of elegant design and decorative elements. When one compares the region around the Mediterranean during the period of Roman homogeny, one can see the profound changes that had taken place as a result of the astounding conquest of Islam. The word Islam means submission to God, and this new faith, which originated in the Arabian city of Mecca, was soon to transform the Mediterranean world. The text for this faith, the Quran, claims to have its foundation on figures from the Old Testament. In 611, Muhammad claimed to receive a vision from the archangel Gabriel, who revealed to him his task as prophet and messenger of Allah. He preached in Mecca, where he was not appreciated, and then in the city of Medina, where he had better success. There is a relationship between Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. All three have Old Testament roots. Hagar and Ishmael, first son of Abraham, were rescued from the desert by an angel. Supposedly, the site of this rescue was Mecca, the birthplace of Islam. Almost immediately after Muhammad's death, political and religious difficulties arose among his followers. But the civil wars did not stop the march of Islam, which was spread by the sword. But gradually, the territories broke away from under the control of powerful dynasties. The Umayyads in Syria and Spain in the 7th and 9th centuries, the Abbasids in Iraq from the 8th through the 10th centuries, and the Fatimids in Egypt and Tunisia from the 10th through the 12th centuries. One of the great triumphs of Islam is its entry into Jerusalem, the home of the three great religions of the Middle East, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The Dome of the Rock, a structure created to mark Muhammad's ascent into heaven, was erected on the supposed site of Adam's burial, also the area of Abraham's sacrifice of his son Isaac, and later the Temple of Solomon, destroyed by the Romans in 70 CE. This structure, the Dome of the Rock, was erected under the Umayyads in 687 CE. It is thought that the rotunda of the Holy Sepulchre influenced the design, also in Jerusalem. The Dome of the Rock was conceived not as a place of worship, but rather as a sanctuary marking a particular holy site. The very name of this building describes its function, covering the supposed rock from which Muhammad ascended into heaven. It has been suggested that the Umayyad Caliph Abd al-Malik, who commissioned this structure, wanted it to outshine the Christian monuments already constructed in Jerusalem, or even to create a more spectacular site than the Kaaba in Mecca. Thus it could be argued that not only was a deeply religious commitment made by Caliph Abd al-Malik, but also a political statement as well. The Dome of the Rock creates a visual presence in Jerusalem. The gilded dome marks the horizon of the cityscape. Though greatly restored 16th century tiles replaced the original mosaics, the original appearance must have been as spectacular as the dome is seen today. The interior program retains much of the original 7th century mosaics. The interior is carefully designed to create an elegant interior space, which created a vision of the message of Muhammad. In addition to the floral motifs, there are inscriptions that are specifically addressed to the Christians. For example, one excerpt reads, The Messiah, Jesus, Son of Mary, is only an apostle of God.
The intent of the inscriptions was meant to teach the Islamic tenet that there is only one God, Allah, and that his prophet is Muhammad. Again, the intent of the structure serves two, a twofold purpose. One, the monument to a religion, and two, a political statement regarding the rulership of the territory. This was to become the crusader cry in the medieval period, free the Holy Land from the infidel. The religious demands of Islam influenced the development of mosque architectural form. The essence of Islamic religious practice is prayer, a simple private act that makes no demands for an elaborate liturgy. The major requirement was an indication of the direction of Mecca, for Muslims are obliged to face Mecca when they pray. A wall, known as the Qibla wall, indicated that direction. In the center of the Qibla wall was a niche, known as the Mirab. Both are seen in the plan of the Great Mosque at Karawan, Tunisia. During the Umayyad dynasty, the capital had been moved from Mecca to Damascus. The Great Mosque of Damascus, 706 to 715 CE, was commissioned by the son of Abd al-Malik, Caliph al-Walid, just as the Dome of the Rock was meant to dazzle the Christians in Jerusalem and perhaps gain more converse, verts, so was the great mosque in Damascus. This was to be a glowing architectural ornament for the entire Islamic world to see and appreciate. The Caliph had raised a number of Christian and Roman structures to make way for his mosque. The elaborate decorative program developed by the predominantly non-Arab craftsmen completed the great mosque. When Damascus had been captured in 635 CE by the Arabs, the mosque was relatively simple. In fact, the Arabs used the precinct of a Roman temple to serve as their open-air mosque. Caliph al-Walid was interested in solidifying the Umayyad presence in Damascus and the importance of the Muslim tradition. Once again, a twofold purpose was intended for the structure, religious and political. The decorative program used the mosaics for the interior and parts of the exterior. The mosaic creates a rich and opulent surface. This was in keeping with the design program. The detail from the mosque shows just such a surface, a pavilion and flowering rooftop. Perhaps this meant to be a glimpse of paradise or an indication of the peace and contentment one can find not only as a follower of the religion, but also under the guidance and rulership of the Umayyads. Another mosaic from the courtyard spandrel shows a tree in bloom and fruit, possibly an almond tree. The symbolism for the almond is one of divine approval, and it could be detailing the wealth of the city and the area under the Umayyads. Muhammad's concern about idolatry, however, dictated that no human forms could be represented in the sacred precincts and this rule was followed throughout the Muslim world. The decorative program developed for the Great Mosque also adhered to this stricture. The development of the mosque became more complex and ornate as the attitude of prayer went from a private, personal devotion to a communal devotion celebrating the Islamic Sabbath, which occurs on Friday. The personal devotional prayer has never been abandoned by the followers of Muhammad. However, as the conquest grew and the territory expanded, it could be suggested that the subsequent rulers and dynasties wanted to establish a rich heritage for following generations. The richest decoration was devoted to the mihrab, for the mihrab was the niche in the Qibla wall, which is the encompass pointing to the worshiper, which is the compass pointing the worshiper to Mecca. In the great mosque of Cordoba, the dome over the mihrab shows the rich complexity of the decorative programs which have been developed now. The general direction of early mosques had been simple, for Muhammad urged simplicity, abhorring all vanity that might lead to idolatry. However, the simplicity urged by the Prophet was ignored by many of his followers, particularly the powerful successors to the Umayyads in Spain who enlarged the mosque at Cordoba which was begun under the Umayyads, using a rich profusion of architectural forms and decorative motifs. Perhaps this was meant not only to honor Allah, but also to create the impression of an opulent court and dynasty, which would effectively commission such a rich decorative program. 
The dome is set over the mihrab on squinches, the alternate structural device which Muslim architects favored. Squinches were structural units that were placed diagonally across the four corners of a square, turning it into an octagon, and as such became a much more suitable base for a dome. The interior of this portion of the mosque is rich in decorative arabesques. The arabesques based on the organic rhythms of the plant world, combined with the elegant calligraphy of the words of the Holy Quran, were profusely used in mosques throughout the Muslim world and are seen here. These very rich and fluid decorative programs developed for the mosque were thought to assist the faithful in focusing their thoughts on the marvels and glories of Allah. In Iran at Isfahan, the exterior tiles, which were part of the decorative programs developed for the Shah Mosque, reached its highest point for the art of ceramic tile work. The dome of the Shah Mosque creates the vision and the illusion of infinite motion. It was to reflect the divine wisdom of Allah and show the infinity of movement that is the mystery of divine love. The exterior was a tribute not only to the divine goodness of Allah, but also a signature statement on the richness and artistic sense of Shah Abbas I in the Safavid dynasty of Persia. The rhythm of the ceramic tile design on the dome is a reflection of the artistic genius of the Safavid tilists, as well as the reflection on Shah Abbas I, who commissioned the structure. The inscriptions on the drum of the dome counterbalance the elegant and circular spirals. The windows piercing the drum also effectuate that rhythm of movement, which is an intrinsic component of the overall design. The windows pierce the interior with light and create a sense of play, of light and shadow on the exterior. The Byzantine emperors had to struggle constantly against the incursions of the forces of Islam, and finally Constantinople fell before the onslaughts of the Ottoman Turks in 1453, thus bringing the history of the Byzantine Empire to a close. As the conquerors of Constantinople, the Ottomans were very aware of the rich building history the Byzantine rulers had developed for Constantinople and the surrounding territory. In the Ottoman capital of Irene, Salim II commissioned Sinan to construct a mosque which would reflect the current philosophical architectural expression. The architect Sinan created the mosque of Salim II even though it bears a certain resemblance to the Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. Sinan was able to create a visual mountain of centralized space, dynamically defined by the four minarets and dedicated to Islam. The dome, which rests on the great buttresses, creates a presence in the city. The interior space is unified by the great dome, which in turn is surrounded by windows, creating a great glowing halo. The interior decorative program once again reflects the rhythm and flow of the arabesque to its best advantage, creating a beautiful interior that does not in distract from the form of the structure. The interior space is one of calmness and serene silence. Islamic architects explored many options to combine a variety of strong structural elements with rich surface decoration. The facade of the 8th century fortified Muslim palace Mashata in Jordan was decorated with a delicately carved frieze that seemed to turn stone into lace. So called makarnas or stalactite decoration is the best example of ornamentation that seems to deny the underlying structural solidity of the forms it covers. In contrast to the elegant surface design of Mashata is the vast plain mass that is the madrasa mosque mausoleum complex commissioned by Sultan Hassan in the 14th century in Cairo, a vast complex that houses his mausoleum, mosque, and university. The building is arranged around a huge square central court contained, containing an octagonal fountain. In its cruciform arms were four universities that were controlled by the four principal sects of Islam, and at one end is the tomb of the Sultan, which is covered by a rich stalactite dome. The multiple functions are enclosed within a powerful architectural complex, combining strong, simple volumes of square and dome with vertical accents of the minarets.
the apotheosis of stalactite decoration is found on the walls and domes of the 14th century Alhambra Palace in Granada in southern Spain. The living quarters of the palace were arranged around two open courtyards and water was circulated from them throughout the entire palace. The courtyards originally were planted with, with flowers and formed enclosed gardens symbolic of paradise, the idea taken over from the ancient Persian tradition. The Islamic paradise garden had water in the center and was flanked on the lower tiers by flowers, then a higher tier of bushes, and then finally fruit trees. Colonnades that are decorated with stone latticework of the greatest refinement enclosed the courtyards. The stalactite decoration of the Hall of Two Sisters is an incredible confection of elegant stucco forms. The interior was to reflect the dome of heaven and the windows piercing the dome of the hall would bounce light off the mucarnas or stalactites and create an atmosphere of light and shadow resembling a starry night both during the daytime hours and at night. The rich repertoire of abstract motifs was used to adorn religious as well as secular buildings. The profusion of repeated abstract geometric forms found in the prayer hall of the Great Mosque of Cordoba, in the facade of the Mausoleum of the Samanids, or in the tile work such as the Mirab from Madrasa Imami in Isfahan are all part of the rich decorative history. The rich arabesques are used to create a surface decoration, pattern, and bright color for flat two-dimensional surfaces. Perhaps the most elegant combination of form and decoration can be found in the Taj Mahal, built in the 17th century by one of the Muslim rulers of India, Shah Jahan, who, to commemorate his beloved wife, Mumtaz Mahal. The exquisite and perfectly balanced volumes of the mausoleum, its curving dome and its minarets, are echoed in the steel pool. The white marble building, so delicately chiseled with arabesque designs, seems to float in the garden of paradise. The small luxury arts of carpets, metalwork, miniatures, and manuscripts were a favorite form of collection among Islamic rulers. These works demonstrated the erudition of the gift giver, as well as the favor and high esteem in which the gift giver was held. The arts were so highly regarded by the rulers that royal or imperial factories were established to promote the creation of these works. For example, Shah Majib in Iran established a number of carpet factories. These carpets were highly sought items and indicated the rank of the individual. The design followed the very strictest precepts of non-human figuration. However, a truly masterful artist could and did create magnificent specimens. The carpet designed by Mosque of Kassan is a beautiful blending of arabesque and color that covers the entire surface of the carpet. The Baptistry of St. Louis circa 1300, shows the excellence at which the metal worker excelled. The basin does, however, conflict with the Muslim precept of figuration. It is the work of Muhammad in Al-Zayn of Mamluk of Egypt. It has been suggested that one reason the figuration appears is the Mamluks were former Turkish slaves and that their adherence to the precepts of Islam were not as strong or rigorously followed. The scene is one of Mongols and Mamluks, enemy and hunter. It could serve as a reminder to the Mamluks of their ascendance to power after the Mongol invasion of the Eastern territories and could further serve as a reminder of the abilities of the Mamluks to withstand the Mongol aggression. But its value to the West is very clear. The basin was used as a baptismal basin for the heirs to the French royal family. Islamic miniatures were used to tell stories of the dynasties and their heritage. These miniatures established a mythology for subsequent generations to witness and enjoy. Sultan Muhammad's verso from the Shahama of Shah Tazmap is such a work. It tells of the legendary Gayumars, first king of Iran. It details the bird's eye perspective, the king with his sons and his court. The landscape is rich and luxuriant. The circular formation of the court and his two sons, both in white, allow the eye to move across the page easily. It is also a device to center the primary figure, Gayumars. The landscape flows outside the border and into the border, a device seen in Western manuscripts. It could be argued that the selection of the imagery, Gayumars and his court, 
could be an attempt to show the lineage of the Savahids and their connection to this legendary ruler. These works did influence the West, and they were recognized as prized and precious objects.